something story is told to teach that you should not correct a patient with hyponatremia too quickly because this might lead to damage in the pants called pantine myelinolysis which on imaging gives hyperintensity on the T2 weighted and diffusion weighted images with a so-called trident sign and there is sparing of the periphery of the pants. There is also often extra pantine involvement with symmetrical hyperintensity without mass effect of the basal ganglia, lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus and of the cerebral white matter. The supratentorial and infratentorial involvement combined is highly specific and pathognomonic for the osmotic demyelination syndrome, as it is called nowadays. Some people look at the entire image and use their imagination, and instead of calling this a trident sign, they think it resembles the nose of a piglet and call it the piglet sign in osmotic demyelination syndrome. The primary injury in osmotic demyelination is to the astrocytes. And as discussed in the previous vlog on hyponatremia, if there's hyponatremia, the brain cells shrink, especially the astrocytes, and they get rid of electrolytes and osmolytes. And if you restore that, the astrocytes get damaged and this, initi this initiates the abnormalities seen in osmotic demyelination syndrome. This is a red model of rats with osmotic demyelination syndrome that have been corrected after 12 hours and this is a control population and the astrocytes have been labeled green and you can see there's an entire area lacking astrocytes here which is the region of the ODS and there was another marker for DNA damage and apoptosis and there was a lot of apoptosis of the astrocytes in this area and in the rats with the demyelination syndrome there was a clear boundary between the normal brain and the affected area. The astrocytes have very clever gap junctions with the oligodendrocytes and there's also loss of aquaporine and endothelial cells and disruption of the blood-brain barrier. So the astrocytes get damaged, then there's this astrocyte oligodendrocyte network that is disturbed, which leads to the release of cytokines that are pro-inflammatory, which activates microglial cells, and these microglial cells disrupt the myelin sheets. There's also something very interesting in osmotic demyelination syndrome emphasizing the close, clever crosstalk between the oligodendrocyte precursor cells, the oligodendrocytes and the astrocytes that we also talked about in multiple sclerosis. Because if there's demyelination, the brain tries to remyelinate it with oligodendrocyte precursor cells. But in osmotic demyelination syndrome, there is loss of astrocytes in the lesion. And when the oligodendrocyte precursor cells migrate into the lesion, they cannot differentiate into oligodendrocytes because the astrocytes are missing and they need to 
play a part in the differentiation from the OPCs to the oligodendrocytes. So because this does not work, which is called a parenchymal response, we go one step back in embryology and there are oligodendrocyte precursor cells from the subventricular zone and they have astrocytes in their vicinity and they can differentiate into oligodendrocytes and provide some degree of remyelination. And this is why the remyelination in osmotic demyelination syndrome is often not very successful because the astrocytes are missing in the primary lesion. Osmotic demyelination syndrome can also be caused by other electrolyte disturbances and osmolite disturbances. And this is the case of a patient with diabetes and ketoacidosis who has a similar picture of pantine myelinolysis. In the differential diagnosis from a radiological point of view are pantine glioma, infarction and other metabolic diseases with involvement of the basal ganglia. And sometimes patients with electrolyte disturbances also have hypertension. So pantine hypertensive encephalopathy, which is a special subform of PRESS, might also be a good differential. And on imaging, there is involvement of the periphery of the pons in this pantine hypertensive encephalopathy. Often there is also involvement of the parietal and occipital regions in press, and we're going to have a closer look at that one in the next vlog.